in like the seventh grade. I remember filling out like a like a specialized exam, and it was like race, African, uh, Caucasian or white, Native American, and or Asian and Pacific Islander. And I didn't fill out race because I'm not Caucasian, I'm not African, I'm not Asian, and I didn't know I was Native American. So I just left it blank, and I went to go give it to my teacher. And she was like, what are you doing? Like, you're white. I was like, really? The reason why I started dressing like this was because I want to tell my own story, which is like a story of indigenous resistance, rebellion, and truth. I was 17 years old, and I had just started hanging around this guy called Angelo Baque. He's a fellow Ecuadorian like me. And I remember speaking to him about all the things I was going through. And he was like, you know, like, we're indigenous, right? This is the first time I ever heard someone say anything like that. Like, what, what do you mean we're indigenous? What does that even mean? He was like, yeah, like, we're Indians. Our people are Indian. My whole life I had been labeled as Latino or Hispanic, when in reality those words mean are nothing to me. I'm indigenous. I'm not Latino or Hispanic. Once I realized that I had this identity and now I was able to reclaim it. That was when I began the journey of finding myself. Both my mother and my father were born in, in the United States, were born in New York City. But my mother is Ecuadorian and my father is Colombian. My mother's grandmother was a traditional healer in, in Cayambe. I didn't find this out until like a year ago. I didn't know because a lot of people, including my family, left their homeland to escape the prosecution that indigenous people were facing. It's the same thing they did with the Northern natives. When you displace a people, when you try to assimilate them and you uh, systematically genocide them, that's a Holocaust. There was a Holocaust in America and it's still happening today. People still live on reservations. People still don't have drinking water. Mm -hmm. I can't blame you for not sharing photos or sharing stories because that's life or death. I still had a lot to learn as far as like being indigenous, what does that mean? And um, I, I got the opportunity to start working closely with uh, Angelo Baque at Awake. And I realized I want to tell my own story. And the most accessible point for that was fashion. What I put on my body is important to me, you know? So I'm not going to put something on that doesn't feel right. Right now, where I'm at, I feel like I've found a place where. I can know what my truth is and then find genuine ways to express that truth. This cardigan was handmade in Ecuador. I got it on my last trip when I went. Same thing with these pearls. These pearls are from Ecuador. I was born in the United States. When I went to Ecuador, I felt like I was home. I try to just surround myself with things of, of home. Most of the shopping I do is thrifting. My earlier stuff, like I want to say like in my first year, it was all like vintage reworks. I'd go, figure out what I needed, go to the thrift store and then sew it. Right now I'm wearing a vintage uh, rework that I made. I was reading about basically like the Cointel Pro like hit list. It is a hit list, but it's almost like a list of, of heroes almost. And then I'm wearing uh, a long sleeve also for my brand. It says better to die standing than to live kneeling. The name of the brand is uh, Primer Rebelde de America. So America's first rebel. It was the title they gave to Hatwe. He was a chief of the Taino people. He led the first rebellion against Christopher Columbus. That was the first time that anyone stood up to the evils that be in the Americas. My brand primarily focuses on these stories in the Americas, but it's really about standing up to injustice all over the world. It might be someone that is touched by the things that I'm speaking about. They might see a t-shirt or a sweater and they're like, what does that mean? So if I could make something like this look cool, and they're like, oh, like, why is it like, why is there a buffalo skull on it? I encourage them to do the educational work that goes behind it. Google buffalo skull. One of the first things you see is like the, the forced genocide of the buffalo on Indian land. So it's, that's important to me. I usually only wear Docs just because they were like some of the only like vegan shoes that I have. I love my vegan Docs. During the time of the Amazon forest fire, there was like an article that came up on my phone and was like, if you care about the Amazon burning, then you should stop eating meat. 80% of the world's soy 
is fed to livestock and they're actively moving out indigenous tribes, some of them uncontacted, deforesting the land that they were once on and creating soy farms. What made me change was that I knew that it was, it was actively displacing and killing my people. It was only recently that I started to braid my hair. It started off as just like a convenience. Like I, I didn't want like my hair to stick to my face. And when I learned about all the history of people cutting hair, taking away regalia, burning cultural artifacts, you know, I was like, this is a way to reclaim my identity. I've just done it every day since. I was always comfortable wearing whatever. I think it comes from my mom like that confidence and that courage that she has just as a person. This whole fit is like inspired from like two different generations of like high school. But this is something I wore in high school. And then this is sort of inspired by my mother. I see old pictures of my mom and I'm like, you used to wear a uniform. Like, how'd you look so fly? Like, how'd you look so good? She had like a camo fatigue button down, like wrapped over her skirt. Hence, you know, I did Mm -hmm. the exact same thing, except it's just, mm -hmm. I sewed it on to make it look more like a skirt mm -hmm. rather than like something just wrapped around. I've had like situations where like I'm walking home late at night and I'm wearing like a skirt or I'm wearing like a dress or something. And I see like two dudes walking my way. They're like at the end of the block and I could hear them already like, oh, I, she's cute, she's cute. And I'm like, <laughs> I, oh shit, they're talking about me. I'm like, oh, like do I cross the street? Da -da -da. And they're like, yeah, I'm gonna get that, I'm gonna get that. And then one of the guys is like, yeah, you can have that, that's a dude. And like, they just got like super aggressive and like, you know, thankfully nothing happened. But like, when I come across people like that, it worries me for my own safety, really. I grew up seeing what like that machismo, that toxic masculinity can do just from like being on the street uh, you know, going to Catholic school. I was always a certain type of way where I was always othered. I was getting called pretty much every slur in the book from pre-K to eighth grade. So I felt othered, but I knew what I was doing. There was nothing wrong with what I was doing. That toxic masculinity BS is exactly that, it's BS. It's people who are afraid to do what they want. And for that, I, I, I pray for them. And I, I say, God bless you. You know, I hope you find your way, but you know, I'm, I'm gonna do what I want no matter what. I'm gonna wear a skirt because I wanna wear a skirt. And then that will help others hopefully be more comfortable with what they want to do as well. Funny, we talk about all this and like my biggest insecurity is what other people think. The subject matter of what I'm doing is very sensitive. I'm just worried if the message is going to hit the indigenous not Latino t-shirt. It was rough because I felt like I wasn't clear enough. There was a certain individual who thought that what that t-shirt meant was that a Latino could not be an indigenous person. When in reality, I'm saying the exact opposite. The difference between indigenous, not Latino, not Hispanic is that Latino doesn't mean anything. It's like an American, someone who was born in America saying that I'm American. What does that mean? Are you a white American? Are you a black American? Are you a, a Native American? And Hispanic, that was a European term created by Europeans. I'm going to categorize myself with the same people that subjugated, enslaved, stole, raped, murdered, pillaged my people? No. So for me, it's about, I'm going to reclaim my indigeneity and I'm going to say that I am indigenous. I grew up in this house, but the basement wasn't always like this. It was just a room full of boxes. So everything in here I've like collected off the street taking whatever wasn't nailed down that was like for free. It's like now it's nailed down here. People are like, why do you have an upside down flag in your room that's incredibly disrespectful? Whenever there are people who are in distress or there is like an SOS, you place the flag upside down. My people never left that state of needing help. If you love your country, then you should understand the plight of Indians and you should understand why I'm flying this flag upside down. Most of these writings were like the tail end of my high school experience. When I was in high school, I was like a ball of like hot flaming energy. So I'd come down here, I'd blast my music and I would just write. And then somehow, some way, it just ended up on the wall. 
a common theme for me when I was growing up was like trying to fit in. I've been sober for a year now, a year and a day. So no, no drugs, no alcohol. And when I first picked up all that stuff in high school, it made me feel like I f fit in finally. And uh, it slowly became this tool that I was using to escape. I realized that, hey, if you want to continue doing the work that you're doing and you want to basically continue to live, um, you know, this needs to stop. Because it was by the stroke of dumb luck and by the grace of my creator that I was able to make it out of that alive. And now that I have all the distractions out of the way, the priorities can align themselves. So it's sobriety, it's the self-education that I'm putting myself on, it's my family, and then it's the work that I do. Uh, I wasn't always that close with my family when I was younger, just because I was all over the place, you know? And uh, now that I'm in a better place, I'm in a more stable condition, I could really take the time to spend time with my younger brother, have a conversation with my mother, hang out with my dad. It's funny because now my mom is like, what that t-shirt is about, like, wow, like it, it made sense for me. It brought back something that I forgot and, and gave it context. And now I understand what it was after all these years. There's some things that I'm sure I'll never know, especially from like my grandparents too. Like I'm, I'm sure there's some things that are just will be left unspoken. They're 100% supportive but there's a lot more that they have to work through. And I'm totally respectful of that. I don't wanna live one day with regrets on what I didn't do, whether it be a, a creative project or books even that I'm trying to read. Like why wait another day to like sit down and read this book? Who knows how much I'll learn from that. So this is really just about like using every day as like the golden opportunity to do exactly what I wanna do to ensure a better future for people who look like me and love like me.